Then you have to decide how much time can you allocate to trading? Is it the morning? Is it the uh, afternoon hours? Or is it the evening? And depending on how much time you can allocate trading, you can determine what kind of trading style fits you. Because if you can allocate only the morning session, well, you can do swing trading and day trading. That is the best time. If you only have the afternoon trading session, well, let me tell you, the end of the day, especially from three o'clock to four o'clock, there are some pretty good trading opportunities in the market, and especially as we're going from 3.30 till four o'clock into the ramp. It never fails. I mean, look at today's price action. The market actually rallied, right? Okay, into the close. Uh, so decide to see what kind of style will suit you best. If you're busy all the time, swing trading is for you. That requires minimum time investment along with active investing. You place the trade, you review it, you place alerts. I love placing alerts in trades. And then you're all set. You don't have to micromanage the trade as if you were for day trading. Okay. And then education comes first. And of course, service comes second. The most important parts of trading are, uh, that are rarely discussed are confidence. You have to have confidence in your method. You have to have confidence in yourself. You have to have conviction. You have to have conviction that you're on the right side of the trade. And that is not hard to do. I promise you that. And we're gonna take a look at some charts after today's trading session. And I'm gonna give you some trading ideas going into the overnight and going for tomorrow's trading session. The third thing that you need to have is patience. Patience is crucial. Knowing that, hey, today is a good day to execute trades. Maybe, uh, maybe 10.30, like I said, my preferred trigger time is not lining up. Today, it didn't line up. So guess what? Today, I did not take any day trades. I did not want to risk anything. And I promise you this, if I would have wanted to get into some day trades today, I would have been probably red for day trading because it was a total whipsaw. It was very hard. Smaller time frames were very difficult to trade. So I stayed out of the market. But guess what? I am in YM long since yesterday. And my trade is into the green. So I didn't have to overwork my day trading because YM was already working for me. Okay, so I already had, um, I already had a, a trade that was active. The other thing is mental toughness, okay? Mental toughness uh, is very important and something that if you don't have, you need to start working on it. Now, the thing with mental toughness is that it gets all of us so because it's very emotional. It works on the emotional side. For instance, we take a trade. Let's say we take a trade right now and we stop out, okay? Uh, what are your feelings? Well, it's not a great feeling because you lost money, right? But are you ready, let's say, in, within the next maybe one minute or less to jump back into the same trade if it sets up? No. And that is because emotions and the, uh, the fact that we stopped out from the first trade is going to prevent us from immediately getting into the second trade. Okay, so that's why we need to develop mental toughness because if the chart is there, you got to get back in the game. Okay, discipline. You have to be very organized and you have to have a lot of discipline in trading. So you have to know exactly, and I'm talking technicals here, you have to know your exact parameters. You have to know your, uh, your entry points, your stop points. You have to know your target levels. You have to know your position sizing, your risk, your risk tolerance. So that's why you need to apply all these elements within the discipline. And this is going to keep you on the right side of the trade. Uh, education. Education comes first. Okay. So guys, wherever you're getting your education, whether you want to get it from me or you want to get it from someone else, that's fine. But invest in education. You need to know how to trade. Otherwise, you're going to be a liquidity provider from the market. And remember that I have, a, I've had, I have a lot of students that have blown many, many, many accounts. And uh, after blowing many accounts, and I'm talking about small accounts, then they came with me and start working with me. And uh, they took my classes 
and now they're starting to uh, to see what their mistakes were. So remember, you're paying the education once, and you have it forever. It is a and you're learning a recession proof method. Okay, your recession proof method. Okay, uh, I'm gonna answer all your questions. Uh, I'm gonna answer all your questions, guys, at the end of the session. So all these factors represent 90% of the battle, okay? 90% of the battle because trading is 90% psychological and only 10% method. Learning how to trade the right way is not hard. It's not hard. I will teach you how to trade in a week. The implementation is hard. That's why we developed this system where you come in the trading lab and then you come and trade with us in the trading room, okay? So you develop the good habits and I teach you how to develop the confidence, the conviction, the, pen, the, the patience, the mental toughness, the discipline, provide you with the ongoing education every single day. I'm going to drill it in your head every single day. You know why? Because I was fortunate enough to have a mentor and my mentor would drill knowledge and will drill methodology, patience, conviction, strategy in my head every single day, every single day, eight hours a day for six months. This is what we, this is what I did. And then that transformed my training. And now I love to share that with, share all this information with you, Peter. I was trained by institutional trader with Goldman Sachs. Trading 101. So what is trading? Okay, is it strategy? Is it managing risk? Is it entries? Is it stops? Is it execution? Trailing strategies? Psychology? Handling different market conditions? What is it? What is it? It's everything put together. And this is the art. Exactly, Larry. You got it. It's everything. It's the art of putting the puzzle together. Because here's the thing. You come to this webinar and I'm gonna teach you, let's say, one strategy. But because you don't know how, you don't have the rest of the puzzle, my strategy will not be working for you. I'm gonna be making money with my strategy and you're going to lose money with my strategy. Why? Because I'm using the complete tool, the complete uh, uh, set of tools to work my trade versus one single strategy, right? So what I'm trying to say is that you have to have all the information and you have to know everything and how to apply everything in certain market conditions. And this is what we do in the trading room every single day, okay? Okay, exactly, trading is art, not science. Larry, you said it, okay, it's true. It's not, it's not science and it's not hard, guys. You don't need to know math. You don't need to know uh, fundamentals in this market environment. You don't really need to know anything else in technical analysis. That's what makes it so easy. But you need someone to drill it in your head every single day. And that's what I do in the trading room. And sometimes I know, like, I'm so repetitive, you know, and I highlight the levels. I highlight this. I tell my traders, okay, this is it. This is the, this is not it. We're not taking a trade here because this is this and that. So I come documented why I'm not taking the trade and why I don't want to risk. Sometimes, sometimes you get the perfect trigger like today. Today I had, uh, today I had, uh, today I had, um, uh, an idea about a trade long in YM, but I didn't want to, take the trade in why I'm long or even the S&P because we discussed these two, uh, these two indices because the trigger was right into resistance and because the trigger was right into resistance and the target one was very, it was about 20 points away from that resistance point, I passed the trade. So I said, listen, we have the swing trade working for us. Why force it? Because our trade right now is in the money and it's making money. In fact, we have a brand new high uh, into that 920 area. So listen, guys, you, when you want to start trading, do you invest in a fast internet? Of course you do. You call your internet provider and say, hey, give me the fastest internet you have. Why? Because you're day trading. You need a fast internet because the execution has to be super fast. Then you need a trading computer and you have to get a really good trading computer. You have to get some really great monitors. 
right? And when you're day trading, I'm not a believer. Trust me, guys, these people that are showing, you know, uh, that, that are, uh, I don't know, on the beach, on a lounge chair with a little iPad or a laptop and telling you that they're day trading, that's not true. Oh yeah, they, you can manage your active swing trades and investing trades like that, but trust me, uh, you know, those are, uh, uh, you, you cannot day trade from the beach. That's for sure, you can't, okay? So you have to invest in some good trading computers and uh, into a good, uh, good comp into uh, some good monitors. Okay, the other thing is that uh, you have, you pay your trading fees at commission, right? You, you, you pay them every single day. Once you execute the trade, boom, your broker takes the money, right? For executing the trades. But don't you think that you invest so much money in everything else? Don't you think that you have to invest some in yourself? So education is power and you only need to learn it once and it takes time. Trust me. So even if you learn how to trade this week or next week, it only takes about a week serious one-on-one -on -one or in a class to learn how to trade. And that's what's about three hours a day, okay? Or you can learn it in two days, about eight hours. The principles, everything that you need to learn. The difficulty is putting everything into practice because your head is gonna be spinning from so much information and you're gonna go like, oh my gosh, and I'm sure. That's why you need a mentor, right? But you need to learn all this thing, okay? You need to learn all these things. So invest in yourself. It's an investment in your future. Uh, you will get the best return on investment in the future when you will be harvesting the benefits and that's the profits as a result of you making an effort today. Time-wise, because it's time consuming. We didn't even consider that, right? Time is money. So you're investing in computers, you're investing your time, you're investing in education. So it's a lot of investing, right? But it's so much better than anything else, guys. It's so much better. So I am telling you the profits that I'm making right now, and I have an MBA, the profits that I'm making right now, I would not have made even with an MBA at any kind of firm. So I'm more, I'm happier trading my own trading account. Trading essentials. So like I said, you need a fast computer. And if you're a day trader, you need at least three monitors. And I'm going to share with you why. Okay. If you want some computer details, I'm not affiliated with anybody else, but I can, you know, or you could just browse around and say trading computers. You could have a plethora of companies and just uh, select from there. You need a fast internet, right? From your provider, like I said. And then the other thing that you need guys, and I have huge surprise for you all here. You need a broker, you need an online broker. Well, the minimum required to open a futures trading account is about $5,000 if, if you want to trade with uh, TD Ameritrade. Uh, and uh, here's some brokers and some ideas, but we have a, uh, we have a really great deal for you today. Uh, we just got off the phone, I just got off the phone yesterday with, uh, with TradeStation and they have a special offer. We're gonna be working exclusively with TradeStation and they have a special offer for Trade Out Loud members and traders. You guys are gonna get 20% commission rebates up to $1,000 when you open an account with them. You get free software and non-professional non data with our simplified, uh, with, at, with their simplified price planning. And guess what? The best thing is you can open an account with as little as $500 and get started with a mini micros. So I think that's pretty fantastic. Plus the rates are fantastic. Uh, for stocks and ETFs, it's $5 per trade. For futures trading, it's $1.50 per contract per side. Uh, plus Lynn, you're not alone. That's why I'm making the switch. <laughs> and guess what? For micros, guys, it's only 50 cents. And for options, 50 cents plus $5 per trade. I'm going to send you all these details in, the, uh, in an email. So the other thing is that a lot of traders don't have the money. So they say they accumulated the knowledge. They know that, you know, they, they, they have a pretty good idea how to trade. They have traded in a simulated account, but they don't have even that $500 to fund their accounts. Guess what? You know, we work with a company and we're going to provide you with the details and a, a future email. Don't want to waste my time here with this. Uh, but 
we work uh, with, um, no, Trade Station is in Singapore. Trade Station is all over. Trade Station is all over. I'm going to send you all the details, guys. All right. So uh, if you think you have what it takes to trade, uh, you can prove it and earn a funded account. I'm going to send you some information on that. And you can trade a prop account by paying only an, uh, a monthly subscription. All right. So basically, you need trading education, a mentor, and ongoing support for education. All right. Now I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but this is my office in Boca Raton, Florida. We're heading there uh, the end of September. And this is my, uh, my trading computer right this is my trading and by the way this is the thinkorswim platform that i've been having some issues in the last two to three trading uh, trading weeks so right here up front and we're going to talk about platform optimization right here up front i have my active trader okay so i have my active trader up front let me see if i can uh pull it up here okay let me just give me one second here all right this is my active trader. Do you guys see it? Just give me a one. Just give me a one if you guys can see it. Okay, just give me a one. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so this is my active trader, okay? And in fact, I don't need my level two here. So this is what I'm watching right now. You can see that I have alerts and this monitor is right in front of me, okay? So this monitor and the execution is right in front of me. Why? Because I have the dome. I wanna be able to, you know, control the buy, the sell and everything. Okay. Now I'm going to take this away. All right. Let me just put it down here. Okay. And then on my, on my left-hand side, I have my watch list. Let me pull it right here. So this is my left-hand side right here where I have my cursor, by the way, I hope you guys see my cursor. Okay. And I have my watch list. Ta-da. All right. Uh, yes, Kurt, this is uh, think or swim platform. Okay, and I have my indices here. This is all I'm watching, okay? So it makes my life so much easier knowing that, guess what? I'm only watching the futures indices. I don't have to use a scanner. I don't have to use anything else. This, it's really hard to miss a setup when you're only watching like what, six charts. So because I'm a day trader and I mentioned that, uh, but we're gonna talk about time frame. but uh, right now it's uh, into the end of the day, uh, I was uh, watching the five minute charts right? Uh, better realize you have um, um, Peter Palm Trees. No, I'm in Detroit, Michigan right now. And that is my office in Boca Raton, Florida. I didn't take a picture of my Michigan, uh, my Michigan office, but I will, I promise tomorrow. Okay. So I'll, I'll send you guys tomorrow at the next presentation at the next workshop. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of my Michigan office, which is pretty much similar, but instead of palm trees, I have a wall. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, this is what I'm watching. This is my watch list. I watch the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, Russell right here. I watch oil and I watch gold. And you can see here that I have alerts. These are my interest areas. I have my proprietary uh, uh, levels that you see marked with black here. So this is what I have. Then I have my active, uh, then I have my active, uh, my active trader. So let me just go here. Let me share it with you guys. Here it is. Okay. Boom. All right. And now, now you can see when I'm taking a diligent decision, whether, you know, I want to take a trade, this is what I do. Okay. So I go to this screen. I do my top down analysis. I start with the monthly chart, weekly chart, daily chart right here, hourly chart. Then I go, and this is again, your chart, uh, your platform optimization. All my students receive this uh, uh, optimization. Okay. You can adapt it for trade station. You can adapt it for any platform on the planet. Okay. This is my 15 minute. This is my five minute. This is my two minute. And this is my one minute. Okay. All right. So this is my, uh, this is my uh, home screen. Uh, and this is where let's say RTY, I'm going to type it right here. Okay. And then you're going to see RTY with my levels. These are my breakout levels right here. Look how it came in today to the T and then it launched higher and higher, okay? Now it has reached a uh, resistance point. But anyways, we're gonna do some charting uh, at the end of this presentation. But what I'm trying to show you is that you need to have a really good setup so you don't toggle your, um, 
you know, your charts, because if you're serious and if you want day trading to be your business, just invest in three monitors. They're not expensive. Trust me. You could go on Amazon and buy them. You could go on Costco and buy them. So they're, they're not that expensive. Okay. Let me see if I get this out. All right. So this is, uh, this is the screen that I have right here. Now on the right hand side here, I do have, let me just pull it out. Just give me one second here because I have a lot of these windows out. Not this one. Hold on. All right, here it is. Okay. I have the rest of my indices, uh, the rest of my commodities. Okay. So you can see them right here. I have bonds. I have gold. I have copper, natural gas. By the way, I closed a killer trade in natural gas. And I was looking today for a kind of like a counter uh, short. But anyways, uh, I have uh, some soybeans, wheat, heating oil, RBOB, gasoline, CL. So you can see that I'm, I have different watch lists here, right, that, that I permanently watch. And then, hold on, that's not all. I have multiple charts like this where, and by the way, I'm in all these, the, this is my, uh, my, let's say my watch list, right? Because the reality is that I don't have it in a list, but I have everything on charts, so I don't miss any kind of setup. So I don't write the symbols. So let's say if I wanna get into Apple, I'm not gonna write Apple on a piece of paper or have it in a list. I, I have to see its price action. So these are, the, these are the stocks that I'm in. I actually am like, I have three screens like this of stocks, so I'm very active in screen trading. So I do have a lot of trades that are ongoing right now. I even have some trades from last year. I, we have silver from last year in November, okay? All right, so uh, this is pretty much how you can optimize your, uh, your platform. And this one right here, I use a scanner, I can't, I, I can't drag it here into the screen because there are separate windows. Um, but uh, this is a scanner, is the, uh, is the trade idea scanner that is actually my trading assistant because uh, uh, this is where I'm getting my trading ideas, okay? This is where I'm getting my trading ideas. So platform optimization, we went through this live, blah, yada, 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 okay. So daily routine, guys, I developed a daily routine. Okay, so in the morning, I look for platform updates. Usually, uh, Thinkorswim uh, is updating their platform on Sunday, so I usually run it on Sunday, so I don't have any issues on Monday. Um, yes, Peter, I do have a chair on wheels. <laughs> okay, so the IM session, I also look, the second thing that I look for, that is even before I pop up my platform. I take a look at the economic releases for the day because I want to know what is likely to influence my trading through the trading session in the morning session and in the PM session. Um, I do not trade news and I could care less about news. I don't day trade news. So if I'm in swing trades, I monitor them. I put alerts at some critical levels. I put some emergency stops in place just in case the market goes wild. Uh, but I am not initiating trades, let's say, uh, um, to, next week we're going to have a FOMC meeting. You are not going to see me trade from 2 o'clock, actually from 12 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Uh, but there may be some opportunities from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, but not trading the FOMC. Maybe, three, maybe the last hour or maybe the last 30 minutes, okay? Maybe the last 30, but that's pretty much it. Uh, then market bias. I develop my market bias looking at my home screen. I shared with you guys my home screen. I look at the highest time frame, the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the daily chart every single day, every single day, uh, because I want to have a better, um, a better bias for the market. And I always have uh, I always respect my higher time frames because the higher time frames are basically dictating what smaller time frames need to do. Um, and then I establish my game plan. My game plan for the morning, I typically start uh, doing my game plan and my leveling uh, uh, at around nine o'clock. And you're going to ask probably why at nine o'clock? You should be like, why aren't you trading at nine o'clock? Because I like to trade as uh, uh, after the market opens. I don't like to see that 
uh, fleeciness in the market uh, at 930. And I don't want to be in a trade, not unless you have a really wide stop, you can be taken out in an instant when the market opens. Market has, you know, that calibration uh, at the open and Sometimes it shoots just up or just down and or days like today, it's kind of choppy. Uh, so then I do my game plan because uh, I have the 8.30 news all wrapped up. I have the reaction from the 8.30 news going into 9 o'clock and perhaps into the 9.30. Things seem to quiet down between uh, 9.10 and 9.30. And then that's where I plot my uh, indices for the trading day. That's because we're talking day trading today. In the PM session, I start with, uh, uh, with an analysis of the morning session in conjunction with how the morning session reacted with the overnight trading session. So then I make my game plan for the afternoon. I create my levels and then we play off of, we trade off of those levels. We may trade or may not trade, depending on whether we have announcements or not in the PM session. And then at the end of the day, I do a little bit of a wrap up of how the day, uh, how the day closed, because the close is so important to the market, right? Because it gives you a really good idea of how the overnight trading session is going to shape up. All right, we talked about the future of the count size. You definitely know by now that it, because you're here, you, you're interested in futures, right? So uh, you could trade a smaller account size, great leverage, uh, small position moves with big prof bigger profits than in stocks. Um, uh, you have capital optimization. You get more focus because you're only watching. If you're only watching the indices, basically you're only watching four charts. It's great for hedging, no earnings. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm in that stock, I carry it uh, overnight and now it has earnings and I don't know if it's gonna gap up or down. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, you get way better commissions. You saw that even with uh, TradeStation, uh, no scanner, no indicators, no uptick rules for short positions, et cetera. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, I am focused on the first uh, uh, two hours of the New York trading session. And that is because I cannot trade the London session, okay? Because that is actually my preferred time to trade. Uh, but I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning in order to trade that. Uh, so for those of you guys that are from Europe, uh, we teach you how to trade that London session, okay? It trades off the same principles of the New York trading session and it has the same proprietary trigger times uh, and it has, uh, uh, it has uh, obviously different trigger times than the New York trading session. So it has uh, trigger times adapted for the European session. And, it, and by the way, guys, last week and the week before, the best moves were in the overnight trading session. Okay, the best moves were in the overnight trading session. You also have very uh, good moves into, uh, into oil. You have great moves uh, into gold in the overnight trading session. So uh, lately you had some pretty fantastic moves and a pretty much consolidation or a chop going into uh, the New York trading session. But anyways, we managed to make money. All right, so the, the uh, one thing that I love uh, April, the morning hours are killing you. Yeah, that's because you're in Vegas. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> pre. Okay, so the futures market is literally open 24 hours a day. And uh, uh, Lynn, I'm going to get back to that in just a second. Uh, the trading uh, futures market is open 24 hours, and this is why I love it. And Lynn is asking, Anka, do you... Uh, do set and forget trades? Yes, I do. And in fact, this one right here, uh, YM is a set and forget trade because I'm in a, the long position since yesterday and it, it's minimal management, okay? So even if you cannot day trade the first two hours in the morning or in the New York session, or if you cannot trade the first two hours into the London session, which are pretty similar to the New York trading session, they're super, super active. Uh, you can actually skip some time frames, zoom out a little bit to a little bit larger time frame, and now you have the luxury to do that because you can use the micros, right? You can position size better. Before it was an issue because uh, overnight trading means that you're going to apply wider stops. When you're applying wider stops, guess what? Your risk is going to be wider. And 
it's not going to be a trade where you're going to manage every single uh, manage it manage it at every single step of the way and intervene like in day trading so in swing trading you have to have wider stops for wider profits but definitely i do have those lin and i love those uh obviously you have to know when to take these kind of trades uh, and we have done gold many times this year since it has been very, very active. We have had trades in copper. We have had, tra we have had trades in the indices like this. They are not very, they're, they're not setting up every day. Okay, they're not setting up every day. But when they do, uh, it, when the pattern permits, I love, it's my favorite style of trading to set and forget. My favorite style. Um, absolutely lynn they were great uh which time zone is that uh well in the overnight uh, the overnight trading session for me is basically the asian session and the european session exactly the london session okay so i love to set and forget uh about trades uh in into that time frame and by the way uh, I'm, I promise you guys, Jurgen, I am going to share with you a chart still not too late to get in YM, by the way. It's going to have a little bit of a wider stop. Yes, GMT. Uh, it's going to have a little bit of wider stop, but YM looks for a breakout. And so are the other indices, NASDAQ. And we're talking about set it and forget it. I'm going to give you some set and forget trades tonight because they're setting up, okay? So remind me in case I forget when we're doing a little bit of charting, uh, remind me to, uh, to uh, provide that for you. Obviously tax advantages, you're all familiar, 1099B form at the end of the year, 64 year old here in the US, plus a full-time futures trader like myself may have additional tax benefits with trader tax status from the IRS. So maybe you wanna check with your account on that. Maximum, maximizing capital efficiency, Guys, this is the best thing about the futures market because you can you don't have to have a $20,000 account or a $50,000 account or a $100,000 account to make money. Of course, you know, if you do, congratulations, you can uh no I don't do options on futures. I like to trade the options contract, I like to trade the stock stocks and I do very few options trades, but you could carbon copy my trades and adapt them to uh, to options no problem i like uh i like to trade the stock the common uh and do very very few options trades and i typically do the options and um uh stocks like bkng amazon you know higher price higher price stocks all right so the leverage available in futures allows you to utilize your capital in a more efficient mode than in any kind of any market so for example, if you have $200,000 and you want to speculate in the direction of the S&P 500, you basically have three choices. Number one, you could buy the, you could buy the stock, right? Uh, worth of $200,000 using all available capital. So cash, you could go cash. Uh, this can be done by purchasing the ETF, uh, which for example, in this case is the SPY, right? S-P-Y. It trades in equity stock-like shares, and your exposure would be in cash, $200,000 worth of your whole entire account, right? If you have an account of $200,000. The other thing is that you can buy the same stock, the ETF meaning, the SPY on margin, depending on, your, uh, uh, depending on the margin that you get from your broker. You can have two to one if you're a swing trading status or your day trading status, you have four to one or et cetera. You may have 10 to one if you're trading a prop, a prop account, et cetera. So this allows you to control the same portfolio, but guess what? With half of your size, with a hundred thousand dollar in capital or, but wait, there's more. Uh, you can buy futures on margin, uh, taking advantage of the approximate 10 to 1 leverage available for the uh, available with the mini S&P 500 contract. And this allows you to control the same portfolio of stock by leveraging, guess what? Only 20,000 of your available capital. Okay. All right. So let's move on to uh, if I made you a believer in any way, shape or form right now. So these are some of the reasons uh, uh, why I shifted towards the futures market about seven years ago. Like I said, been trading for 20 years, stocks and ETFs, and 
I, about seven years ago, I made the full switch to day trading because I'm in love with day trading futures and with swing trading futures and commodities. So setups and orders, okay? Before we start, there are two major setups so any beginner trader needs to know. So guys, don't go for really complicated patterns, bull flags, head and shoulders, whatever, whatever the name is. Just forget everything about trading. There are only two major setups that are being used in day trading and swing trading. It all comes to these two strategies. You're either gonna look for breakouts or breakdowns. It's pretty simple. Off of the support level, uh, if you're going long, and if you wanna short, off of resistance level. And guess what? Breakouts and breakdowns, okay? So you have the, oh, I'm sorry, did I say that wrong? You have the breakouts and breakdowns and pulled back buys and pulled back sells. I used to trade CFDs when I was in Europe. Exactly. You can trade CFDs very easily uh, using the same strategy. So uh, Martin, absolutely. So guys, two strategies, the pullback buy or the pullback sell. Do you guys know what a pull, how a pullback, a pullback buy looks like? Do you guys know what a pullback buy looks like? Let me show you. Let me get my chart. All right. Uh, let's say, do you have a favorite symbol or do you, do we, okay. A, okay. All right. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's go to a smaller time frame. Let's say the five minute, right? You can see here that I have my proprietary levels and I have another alert here. Okay. I have a confluence area at the 2957 zone. I have another confluence area in the 20, uh, uh, 20, I'm sorry. This is the 2957 zone. This is the 2965 zone. Okay. This 65 zone. All right, so what the market did, it hovered a little bit higher, tested resistance, it pulled it. And by the way, these are the levels for today. And they're not calculated by this pivot high and this pivot low. They come from way different areas, okay? They managed to trade within our parameters and they, they moved up a little bit and they moved down. Now, let me just get my drawing here set. Just give me one second. All right, here we go. All right, see this formation right here? This is a pullback buy. You get a retracement into your level right here, and then you get the propel higher. You get the price propelling higher, okay? So this is what it is. You get a pullback and rotation at a, at a confluence zone or a support zone, all right? So this is basically a pullback buy. Let me just erase this. All right, so you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars down. You get a green bar. You get the initiation off of resistance. So in this case, your entry would have been 60, 67, 66 and a half. I'm sorry, 66 and a half. You're getting the price higher, revisit, coil around, and propelling higher into the 200 SMA. Okay, so this is the pullback buy. Okay, this is the pullback buy. Uh, April, you can use any time frame, but again, it depends on where it forms. In the morning, it tends to form more on the two-minute time frame. In the afternoon, it tends to, uh, to form more on the five or the 15 minute, okay? Yeah, Robert, it really, exactly. So it really doesn't matter what the name for it is, okay? Some traders are just beginners and they don't know the terminology of a cup and handle, a head and shoulders, bull flag, bull pennant, what have you. But this is so easy to remember, right? Because it's a pullback by inch of support and you're getting that V formation, right? And it's that bottom of the V formation and you get the trigger over 67 and you get the price propelling higher. Uh, no, I don't use that, um, Robert. Breakouts. Okay, remember I said, and we're gonna go uh, to YM right now. Okay, and remember I said that I'm gonna give you a trade idea, right? Notice this range, okay? Notice this range that we're having. We're having support at 26,680. Lynn, you were talking about set it and forget it, okay? We have a secondary support level into the 700, which hold throughout the trading session today, right? And then we have another level here into, uh, the, uh, into the nine, it was, it's actually 913, but it breached, 
right? And we made, we poked through that level 920. Now the price, because the price closed at the high today, the price closed at the high today. Like I said, we are in this trade. Uh, my average is like eight, some, somewhere around here, 850 or so. This is my average. Uh, so I'm looking for a continuation higher into 27,000, okay? Into 27,000, that's my, that's my next target, 27,000. Then I'm looking for 27,042. And then I'm looking for a continuation into 27,200, 27, 280, 27, 300, and 27, 377. And that's, and again, it all depends on plot, on, uh, on how the price, uh, um, how the price is shaping up each and every single day. Okay, so that's a quick, uh, quick example. All right, and that was the break, breakout, right? So we had two examples. So here's another setup, send orders. You have the pullback, the rotation point. Here's the doji. This is the first one. So if you would have thought, okay, I'm gonna get in here you would have been stopped out, okay? So that's one stop out. Remember, uh, remember what I said about mental toughness. You need to have mental toughness and you have to be like a sniper, okay? So you missed your target once because it didn't react well, right? But you're gonna go at it again and you're gonna watch, 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 watch. And then when this is going to start shaping again, you get your doji, you're getting the rotation, go in it again, okay? Go in it again. And then here, Take a look at CL here. And by the way, we talked about this pattern. Do you know what, where uh, oil is trading right now? Okay, you know where oil is trading right now, $58.50. And we noticed that it had a weekly reversal here. This is a pullback buy. This is how a pullback buy looks like, okay? All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so S&P, right? We're talking about a breakout. You need to have resistance. You need to have support. These are the, that's why I don't trade guys. That's why I don't trade a, a, a pre-market because you're getting, when you're having news, this is what you're getting. You're getting a, a big move up and they're getting the pullback, okay? All right, the rule for my stop, Robert, is simple. The bottom of the pivot of, from my entry in any time frame that you're trading. So if you're trading the five minute, if let's say this is, a, a, this is a 15 minute, my stop is right here at the bottom of the pivot. If you put your stop and if you try to choke your stop and if you're stopping out multiple times, now you know the reason why, not, not you Robert, but in general. Uh, so give plenty of room for the stops. Remember, brokers sell your stops. They see where you place your stops and they sell your orders to the people that are providing the algos. I'm not kidding you guys. I'm not kidding you. All right, so you get a breakout here. You're having the price action accelerate higher. This is the breakout, this is the definition. This is your entry, the safer entry from the open, okay? This is your entry from the open. Position sizing, position sizing will determine how many contracts you're going to take the trade with according to your account size and daily loss limit. Position sizing should be determined by one, your account size, and number two, your risk tolerance. So position sizing example. So let's say you're gonna get in long at 28.80 in the mini S&P. And you're gonna have a stop of 28.70. That's a risk of 10 points. Remember, in high volatile markets, the difference between the entry and the stop, because that is the risk, is always going to be high in high volatile markets. Now remember that the last quarter is typically uh, known as being a volatile. So you're going to expect wider stops in the last quarter. Tighter stops are expected in the summer months, June, July, and August. A bit wider stops are expected into the last quarter and into the first quarter with things damping down a little bit into the second quarter. So these are this is actually historical data that I'm talking about. All right, so the m and &E 10 point stop. If you're trading with one contract per, uh, with one contract per trade, that means that you're applying a risk of $500. Now $500 for a beginner trader, I don't care if you have a $200,000 account, 
but a, a, a $500 uh, risk per trade for a beginner trader is too much. You are at the beginning stage where you need to develop your trading skills. Okay, after those skills are learned and you're extremely confident in your decision, that is when you ramp up your size. Okay, all right. So, in there's now there's an alternative, and now you can trade the micros, and it's better than paper trading. Uh, because when we first came out with, uh, with our class, with the Power Income Futures Trading class, um, we were advising all our traders to sit in a simulated account for 30 days. And guess what? A lot of the traders were not trading as advised only one contract. We're not trading only one contract. They were trading multiple contracts. And it's so nice when you see, when you're having like 10 contracts on or 15 contracts on, and when you're, you know, just squeezing the profit and you're trading off of your PNL, you're not paying attention to your method because the size does not matter when you are beginning to trade, when you're learning how to trade. Exactly. By trading with micros, you have skin in the game and you're going to learn how to trade better by using micros just trade one micro because remember you're not going to be trading your PL. you want to know how you apply all the information your entries your stops your orders how you familiarize familiarize yourself with the platform how you trade your method right you're you're more focused on entries stops you're focused on, um, there's a huge commission difference, Peter. It, if you're trading with, uh, with TradeStation, it's 50 cents. It's 50 cents. I'm going to show you in just a bit. If you sign up with us. If you don't sign up with us, it's a little more. So, um, but I'll send you guys all the information. And if you guys want to, uh, um, um, you know, look further into that, you're free to do it. Okay. So basically you can trade and have skin in the game versus doing silly stuff. Okay. So what is risk? Risk is the difference between your entry and your stop, regardless of what time frame you're using. Some traders like to use the one minute chart or the tick chart. Some traders like to use the daily chart or the four hour chart. It doesn't matter. The difference between the entry and the stop is your risk. And depending on how your risk level is, you need to position size. I often met traders that say, hey, I have a $20,000 account and I'm trading lots of three. I'm like, what? No, please don't do that. Okay, Alex, of course, I'm going to send you guys the recording and I'm going to send you all the details. I'm a thinkorswim as well and I'm doing the switch. <laughs> exactly. All right, and com commissions are expensive with Thinkorswim. Let's face it, okay? So guys, you have to position size. You have to position size according to your risk level. If you have, I don't know, I'm just giving an example. If you have, let's say a $20,000 account, you have to know that you can actually risk only, let's say $400 on a trade. I'm just giving you an, a, and this is just an example. And if your trade has a wider stop than that $400, you're going to skip that trade. You're not going to take that trade. Don't overexpose you. I have a class on this and we teach this in our class. It's actually about an hour that we teach and how to do that. Okay. So bottom line is that using micros will give you the flexibility Okay, micros will give you the flexibility to position size. Okay, we also provide a position size calculator for futures. So remember, the one thing that never changes is your size. You have to use the same size on each and every single trade because you're not going to use 200 on this trade and 500 on the next and 600 on 
uh, on the third and then 300 on the fourth. You have to use the same size. Look into your accounts right now. Evaluate how much your account size is. And don't risk more than 1% or 2%. 2% is average. This is what everybody's trading. But if you're a beginner trader, you can go even less than 1%. See what that value is. If you're and decide whether you're going to trade that value or not, depending on the number of trades that you take per day. So in other words, if you have a small account size and you decide to risk $100 on a trade, let's say you're trading micros, and if you decide to trade your risk level per trade is $100, and if you're allowing yourself three trades a day, guys, you should not be taking more than two or three trades a day ever if you're day trading futures okay you're if you're trading more than that if you're in and out every single time you're making your broker super happy and super rich there are not that many opportunities in the futures market as a day trader okay so if you're using that a hundred dollars risk per trade remember that your allocation is is $300 per day if you're allowing yourself three trades a day, okay? So what that means is that if you have today a losing day and tomorrow you have a losing day and the day after you have a losing day, you're out of 1,000 and now you only have, if you're starting with a $5,000 account, now you're down to 4,000. So you must be doing something wrong. So this is where you can make a little bit of self, uh, uh, self analysis in your account and say, hey, why am I losing? Okay, because you're not, if you're applying different amounts per trade and different position sizing for trades, you, you're never going to achieve consistency. Okay. Okay. Um, Justin, would it be better to vary the contract size but keep the risk, uh, uh, the risk constant? No, no, that is the biggest mistake. You have to position size. Trust me on this one. I'm going to have another webinar probably on that, but uh, it is so important you guys know this. Here's the thing, Justin, pay attention, okay? And you guys as well. All right, imagine this. I'm risking $100 right now on a trade, and I stop out. The trade didn't work. I take another trade with a $100 risk, and guess what? I lose on that trade, but I have that fixed set amount of $100, right? So I lose that first trade $100. I lose, lost on my, third, uh, on my second trade $100. So right now I'm down $200. I take my third trade. I always, and I also risk $100 on that trade. Because I risk $100 on each trade, for each trade that I take, because of my system and how my system works, I'm looking for at least two, to, two or three to one reward on my risk. And when my third trade starts working out, and if I make twice of what I have invested in that trade, I make my first loss and my second loss. You get what I'm saying, Justin? So I am going break even on the day if I make only two hours on that trade. And if I make that extra bonus and the trade starts working for me into, let's say, the end of the day or whatever, you know, I get, I get one R on the day. You know what I mean? So basically, I, you can get out of the hole. If you're using the same contract size but different risk, you're always going to chew up your account and your trading is asymmetric. It's not linear. It's not going to progress linear. The secret to day trading and swing trading and active investing, and this is how hedge funds are doing it, institutional traders are doing it, algorithms are doing it, they're applying the same, the same position sizing every single time. The success of the trade can only be measured if you take into consideration the risk. Before taking the trade, the trader needs to evaluate the risk and the potential reward. If the trade is asymmetric, the trade should be skipped and the trader should wait for a better setup, right? That would provide a better reward. Good risk for the trade is when the trade has the potential to provide two, three, or more risk units per reward. So in example A, I have two examples here. In example A, 
uh, in s and I'm going to show you how we have a two-point stop with a six-point reward, all right? So the trader made three times its risk. And then in example B, I'm going to show you an example, a trade in the Dow where we risked 10 points and we made 25 points, right? So the trader made 2.5 times. So here's the chart. This is the pullback, right? This is, this is obviously, uh, this uh, index is obviously in a 15 minute downtrend, right? Because it has lower highs, it has lower lows, it is trading below the moving averages, it's trading below the 200 simple moving average, below the 20, below the 10, and right now it's testing the 10 exponential moving average, right? All right, so, is trading right here. What do you think can happen? Trades can stay, uh, 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 the price action and trade and the price cannot stay extended for longer periods of time extended from its moving averages. So the moving averages are acting as magnets. So in this case, the velocity, the price velocity push the price higher above the 10 exponential moving average, setting up a rotation pattern to the downside. It is called a sell setup or a rotation pattern. The entry is the entry is on this candle right here, right below the prior low. The stop goes above the prior high. So here you have the entry. The stop is 3013. The short entry is 3011. And you're going to look for a potential target back into the low of the day, right? That's your next support zone. Here it is, and it came right there, okay? Two point risk, six points reward. This is how you should be looking at trades. And again, in terms of position sizing, you position size for that. So if you have a two point stop and you have a small $5,000 account, you're gonna get in with one contract, okay? Because it's $100, right? Or you can get in with 10 micros. All right, another, uh, another setup right here. You're having a pullback to the 50 SMA. This is the five minute chart. You're getting a rotation. You're getting a nice hammer candle here for the day trading, for day traders. You have support into the 27 to 12 and this will also represent your stop. Okay. Yes, absolutely, Peter. And then we're getting the rotation and we're pushing higher back into this resistance. This is your potential reward. Actually, the trade went higher. We, trail, we trailed uh, this trade higher. But anyways, this is your, just your target one. So you're risking here 10 points and you're making, 10, you're making 25 points only into target one. But from target one to target two, you still have an ongoing trade. Okay, so let's do the math. Trade A, S&P short, we risk two points, we made six points. If you risk $100 on this trade because one contract is, uh, one, co one point is 50 bucks, the risk is $100 on this trade and you make $300. So that is a three to one reward to risk. This is what you should be looking for, okay? Now, what happens if you have a small account, let's say if you have a $5,000 account and your risk was about five points or four points or six points. Would you take the trade? No, you would have skipped it. But now you can trade the, take the trade using what? Using micros, right? All right. So let's take a look at the YM trade. YM long, 10 points, right? We risked 10 points. We made 25 points. Risk per trade, $25, uh, $50. Uh, profit, 125 bucks. This is two to one, right? This is two to one. Position sizing, guys, this is so important. This is more important than your strategy. This is more important than trailing. It's more important than anything else. Position sizing. And you don't hear enough about this. Position sizing will determine how many contracts you are going to take the trade with according to your account size and daily loss limit. Position sizing should be determined by one, your account size, and number two, by your risk tolerance. Because you can have a ginormous account, but you can have that hot potato feeling every single time uh, you see your account down. So that means that you have to zoom 
in a little bit on your amount and just drop your risk amount anymore. If you have a bigger account, you don't have to trade with 1%. You could trade with half a percent. You could trade with a quarter of a percent, okay? So I gave you the example with $5,000, 2% risk is $100, and that means risk per trade, $300. And the more you understand that, and you're at ease with that possibility, because listen, risk is the possibility of loss. Nothing is guaranteed in the market. So you can have days that you're down $300, okay? You could have days, consecutive days where you're up $300, okay? So position sizing will make or break your account. Trust me on this. Now, on May 6th, the CME launched uh, the micro minis. These are smaller size contracts giving us, the retail trader, a way to participate in the equities futures markets. It's traded at one-tenth of the size of the full-size contract, which means, okay, exactly, Larry, that's the whole thing. Because if you're using position sizing, it allows you to come back and fight another day. You don't position size, you blow up your account. And this is the number one reason a lot of traders are blowing the account. And I see that there are so many webinars out there that, you know, they teach strategies. Let me show you how I'm using this moving average. Let me show you how I'm using this indicator. But guess what? Position sizing is what makes or breaks an account. And I think that a trading education should start with position sizing and not anything else. So basically when you're trading micros, guys, you're trading basically, instead of trading one full size contract of the Dow, you're trading 10 contracts, okay, of the micro minis. So micro minis require way less cash to enter the market with lower margins. In fact, I think you need about $600 or $500 to trade. I think it's $600 for the S&P, about 500 and change for YM. To be able to trade it so um they have amazing liquidity lynn and i have traded micros now let me tell you one thing no they're not the same they're very they're smaller they're smaller very, uh, listen commission should not be a concern for its full size or for uh or for micros trust me i've traded them when they came out on may 6th I was the first one that took a trade in the uh, micro mini S&P. I took a trade and here's the thing. Uh, I told them that this is going to be, I, I, I told my members in the room that this is going to be an opportunity to, it was a very choppy day. And I told them that this is going to be a good opportunity to try to build on a position. And it was because we ended up that day and we made like $275 on, uh, because we legged in and we added, we reduced, uh, uh, into that trade. So we ended up like 200 something, $275 on it, uh, on trading micros. And we had like only three micros. I I'm not kidding. Okay. Uh, I think I have a snapshot of that somewhere. Uh, S and P and NASDAQ, Dow is fine. Russell is fine. Everything is fine. You're, you're not, it's not a concern. So the slippage, there's no slippage. Sometimes you get like very little sl slippage, very, very little slippage, but that's, like literally not significant. Uh, what I love about the micros uh, is that you have the flexibility to build positions, to scale in and out of positions. And uh, tomorrow I will be trading you, I, I will be training you on how to scale in and out. So if you don't know how to scale in trades and scale out of trades, whether day trading or swing trading, stocks or futures or whatever you're trading, I'm going to teach you tomorrow how to do it. Micros trading is 100% better than paper trading because you have skin in the game, Peter. You have skin in the game. And you, ha listen, when you're paper trading, you don't have emotions, right? Because it's not your money. It's not real money. But when your money's on the line, and you want to be successful in trading. And when you see that your strategy matches up with whatever you're applying, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and you, when you have skin in the game, it's so much better. Trust me, even if you're making like, 25 bucks or $30, you're still going to be, you're still going to be super happy because you made that 30 bucks. You exactly. Peter, I agree. Paper trade is kind of cheating, but before we had micros, uh, there, uh, let me tell you this. One contract is a big deal. 
right? We're not trading like in 2015 or 16 or even uh, 2016 before election where we had those five point stops or three point stops. I remember those days. <clears throat> now we have hit with, we're hit with volatility and it's, <coughs> excuse me, and it is, uh, uh, and the stops are really wide. So even if you're a beginner trader and you start trading with one full size contract, woo, that's pretty scary. I could tell you this, but this, uh, the, the micros are fantastic and they enable beginner traders and small account traders, because let's face it, if you have a $5,000 account, you cannot swing trade a full size contract, but now everybody can swing it. Everybody can participate in these moves. Everybody can. And this is not only for the, uh, for the indices, a lot of traders do not know that you can trade micros in gold. Did you guys know you can trade micros in gold? You can trade micros in gold. And instead of having a $500 stop for five points, you could have a $50 stop or a $5 stop. It depends on, you know, the time frame. So you could trade minis and you could trade micros in gold and silver. You could trade minis and oil and crude. Okay, so don't forget that, guys. So the futures market and a natural gas, absolutely. Thank you, April. Okay, so guys, it is such an attractive market because you don't have a lot of, um, um, uh, a lot of instruments to trade and it keeps you focused. Okay, so the most important thing is that less people will blow their accounts by properly position sizing to their, uh, to their account size. The number one reason for blowing up the account is not because you're not applying your strategy, it's because you're using a variable uh, amount for each and every single trade. Uh, no, not all futures have micros. Not all futures have micros, okay? For instance, bonds do not have any micros. Um, the VIX do not have micros, although I would love to see, uh, I would love to see a new product in the VIX, at least a mini VIX, not even a, not a micro, but at least a mini, okay? All right, so how does position size work? The trader needs to define the risk per trade. So in the example, in the example below, you have a small size, uh, small size account risk per trade, let's say $200, right? And here's an example with the mini, uh, mini micro S&P. If you have, <clears throat> if you have a five point stop, which is pretty much the norm today, if you're looking at a five minute chart, uh, you can take this with eight contracts. So less than one, less than one full size contract. Okay. Less than, uh, uh less than that. Uh, plus if you only want to risk a hundred dollars on a trade, and if you have a five point stop, you could take half the size of, of one full size contract. You could actually less than that. You could actually take four minis, right? You could trade four minis in that case. And then again, I showed you the example. You have a five point stop. This is typical for day trades, uh, 10 points and high volatility. This is, you know, this is something that you're going to encounter and 15 points, right? You could have swing trades where it's normal to have a higher stop because what the wider the stop, the bigger the profit, right? So if you're allocating 15 points, you're going to go for 30 points. You're going to go for 50 points. You're going to go for 70 points. Okay. So remember the three to one and two to one risk to reward ratio. These are little things that really add up. Okay. So regardless whether you have a small account, medium, a medium account or large account, the risk is different for each account and you have to match it through position sizing for your position. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of chart analysis, but I want to put you in the time frame, and I just want to get you guys ready for our live trading on a uh, Thursday. Okay. So that's why I'm telling you all this so we can, and I'm going to update you guys on position sizing, going to show you how position sizing works, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, Always start your analysis with the highest time frame and work yourself towards the time frame that you trade on, your zip code, right? My zip code varies from time of the day, in the morning, I like to trade the one, two minute charts. As I'm going into the 10.30 session from 10.30 to 11, I like to zoom out a little bit into the five minute. 
from 12 o'clock to two o'clock, I, I trade off of the 15 minute charts or I watch the 15 minute charts. And then from two o'clock to four o'clock, I like to go back to the five minute. So there's no, so you have to have, uh, you have to have the flexibility to look for the proper time frame uh, in the, uh, at the proper time of the day. Look for confluence zones. I mentioned what confluence zones are, and we're going to do a lot of analysis on confluence zones in the live trading room. We're going to be starting at nine o'clock. I'm going to do a live pre-market game planning from 10 o'clock, from nine o'clock to 930 Eastern, and then we're going to hit the button uh, and we're going to hit the live trading. Uh, good question, April. Are micros best for uh, swing trading or day trading? They're good for both. In my personal opinion, they're not great for scalping because if you're a scalper, you're going to pay more commissions because scalping goes for a small target and they go for one to uh, one to one R. So that means you're risking a hundred bucks, you're making a hundred bucks. And that's not really going to go, uh, going to get you anywhere. Trust me, you're not down the road. If you're a scalper, you're not going to get that far. Okay. You're not going to make a lot of money because at the end of the year, you're going to encounter tons of commissions. It's better to be a trend trader or even a counter trend trader, okay? But you're gonna look for uh, for higher uh, uh, for a higher risk to return, and scalping is not providing you that. Uh, the other thing is defined support resistance on the charts. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that on um, on Thursday. Determine the trend on smaller time frames and bigger time frames. So you have to evaluate the trend. Look for higher highs. Look for higher lows or look for consolidations. If the market is sideways, look for a linear reaction where you can determine if there's enough space where you can actually buy the bottom, sell the high into uptrends or in downtrends, if you can short the high, cover at the low. If you don't, if you don't have that range that is tight uh, going into, uh, uh, into a sideways market, uh, so if you have a tight range, that's not tradable. So just skip it all together, okay? Of course, I will send you the recording, okay? Okay, I'll send you the recording for the one tomorrow as well. <clears throat> and then you have to zoom in the time frame that you trade. And this is exactly everything that we're gonna go through on, uh, on Thursday. Then identify the setup, uh, identify the setup, place your order, sit back and follow your plan, okay? All right, so let's get into some charts right now. Okay, let's get into some charts. Remember, I told you guys that I'm going to provide you with some trading ideas. So how I start my analysis, I started with the highest time frame on the monthly chart. So you can see here, this is last month trading. This is July trading. Remember, it was a little bit whippy, followed that, followed, uh, uh, that immediately followed the FOMC meeting. We sold off of the first conference uh, last month into the FOMC. And then it was that tweet war. Uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, China and U.S. tariffs uh, that brought the market to retest this 25k level, and the market dipped up. Okay, and we closed uh, very close to uh, the uh, the low of the candle uh, from this month. Now this month we only have been trading for about a week, right? Because we had the long holiday, and then uh, we've been trading for only a week now. And in a week we have some truly amazing progress. Uh, we opened up into, uh, we opened up uh, very close to the 10 exponential moving average and we rose higher. So from the weekly chart, I know that if we're going to try to break last, uh, I'm sorry, from the monthly chart, I know that if we're going to break above last month's high, uh, uh, high we're gonna actually going to start propelling higher. Then I'm zooming to the weekly chart. It's so important to do this at every single stage of the way. All right. Um, D, 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 if you're in, uh, if your trend, uh, is down on a five minute, but it is up on, on the daily, what would you do? Well, it depends if the daily is in an uptrend, I have to look. So when you're taking your decision on the five minute, by the way, excellent question. And we're going to get to that. Uh, if the daily is up, you're going to be looking for a pullback buys. Okay. But then again, you're going to get all your answers from your hourly chart and from your 30 minute chart. Because if your hourly chart and your 30 minute chart are still uptrendy, you're still gonna look for pullback buys on the five minute. But if your hourly chart and your 30 minute chart are gonna start to decline, you're gonna be looking to short onto your smaller time frames, even though your daily chart is up, okay? 
Okay. Hey, Dale. Okay. All right. So the weekly chart, weekly chart, notice that we have just issued a continuation higher from the prior, uh, from the prior candle high. So we're going higher daily chart. We just hit the level right here. So we're just moving higher. We have a tradable void to 27,000 and from the hourly chart. So this is a top down analysis. Gerald, I hope to wrap up. This was only support, uh, supposed to be one hour, but I got so many questions that, that I had to answer. All right. So the hourly chart, basically I'm expecting a breakout over nine, uh, 920 uh, that is going to push higher into the 27,000 and into the 2742. Uh, and then we're going to be looking for a void into the 27,227, uh, 27,230. So uh, looking for a higher projection. You can use a stop. Uh, and if you want to take this trade idea, uh, the stop is going to be a little wider. You can use micros for this. Uh, and you could start, you know, you could start building a position because you could actually leg in here. And then you could actually, if the price pulls, here's the beauty, guys, about trading micros. Jump in the trade. Let's say you have that instinct. A lot of traders have the instinct to jump in the trade. Guess what? Now you can work the trade out. Isn't that beautiful? Because you can add, you can reduce, you can add in, you can lift your stop. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> hey, Alex. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So you, if you decide to jump back in here and if the price comes back into, I don't know, into the 850 zone, add more, add one more, uh, add one more contract or lot. If it's coming back into the 790, you can add one more lot here if that's going to happen. Okay. And then if, because here's the thing, it's better to have a little piece of something. And if you jump in here, or if you want to take it on the breakout of 26,920, take it there. Okay. It's better to have a little piece of something than to have a piece of nothing. So with this swing trade that I am currently in right now, I'm expecting a final target of 27,380. That's right, 27,380. So that's uh, 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 almost 500 points from where it is trading right now. And even with, um, oh, thank you so much. Okay, Ben Cat, thank you so much. I had so many questions, I had to address them. So I'm very excited about trading. So if you guys want to stick around for more, you know, this, this is it. All right, so we're going to do the m and &E SMP. I know I had a question, uh, how would I trade the m and &E SMP for the overnight? I loved in the overnight trading session, I like to look at the four hours. So far, we have a stable support into the 29.665. Uh, uh, we want to see if this level holds. We have an additional level at 29.57. So basically when you're talking about, and this is also if you're into pattern recognition and stuff like that, this is also a pullback buy, right? We have the candles and this is the pin and this is the rotation point into the 75 for a balance higher. We close right into this 20 SMA. The more the price progresses above the 20 SMA, the more it will progress into the 84. And we're gonna be looking for bullish levels tomorrow. Uh, are you going to teach us how you're setting your levels? Gerald, I would love to teach you. I teach how to set these levels are strictly correlated with the, uh, with the methodology. And it takes about four hours to teach you how to set this level. So it's not possibly for me to do it in this trading session or in a free webinar, but we, this is something that we teach in, uh, teach in the class and notice how our levels were respected throughout the trading session today. We have three levels, one here, one here, and one here to the T. Okay, to the T. So the m and &E SMP bottom line, if it breaks over 84, is definitely going to push much, much higher, right? Uh, and it does have, it, 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 right now, there's a big resistance at 3,020, uh, 2,990. If this, and this is what the price is fighting right now. The price is fighting this area because the more it's going to fight and hold through this area, the more it's going to punch and have the velocity to trade beyond 3,000 back into the, uh, back into the old time high of 20, of 30, 27 or so. Okay. So it does have room for the upside. I'm going to do one more. Okay. I'm going to do one more NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ uh, from, and I wanna show you something here. Let me go to the 30 minute chart. Okay, NASDAQ is into a bit of resistance here, and this is our level, 78.23, and it needs to dissolve this level in order to become really bullish for us to take any kind of pullback buy. 
uh, into smaller time frames. So this kind of pattern uh, does not prov uh, does not promote uh, really good risk to reward ratio trades and high accuracy trades and high odds trades. And in fact, when you're going to join me in the trading room on Thursday, I'm going to give a lot of trading ideas. Uh, but I'm going to mention, this is a high odds trade. I'm going to take this trade. This is another trade idea. It's a low odds trade, but these are the parameters, okay? Okay, so bottom line is that NASDAQ needs to trade over these highs. The level is 78.23. If it breaks above the high, it can propel higher to the next level, which is 78, uh, 78.58. Now, let's go to the four hour. Okay, the four hour again, the same level that it needs to break at 78, uh, 78 23 with a profit target level of 45. And here we have a cluster, we have a pivot, we have uh, the 20 simple moving average, we have some prior resistance into this area. So things start to, uh, to stack up. So, what that means is that it's going to encounter heavy turbulence into the 47 to 50 area. So, once it breaks through that, it can achieve the high of 58. And then another, uh, this is going to be full throttle higher, 78, 7887. It's going to be like full throttle. Now, don't forget that there is a new contract that is coming. So if you have or if you're in and any swing trades in the indices, remember, we're going to have to roll them, okay, into the new December contracts, okay, by Friday. So keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, all right, I'm open for questions right now, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, before I go, uh, Kurt, I'm going to answer that in a second. Before I go, I want to, uh, and before I continue with the questions, I want to remind you that next week we're starting uh, the uh, September 16th and through September 16th through, tw uh, through 20th, five days. We have trading education live with me. The classes are recorded, but they're always live. They're live like this webinar. You get to answer, uh, you get to ask questions and uh, I'm going to answer all the questions for you. So this is the purpose of live classes. I don't believe that if you take a class that is recorded, that's going to answer all your questions. It's just informative. It's nothing that is professionally graded. So when I learned, when I learned how to trade, I learned it live from my mentor. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't read a book. Uh, I didn't listen into, uh, you know, a webinar. I didn't listen into anything else. So I had to, uh, I learned it live, and this is what you should do. And this is live online at September 16th through the 20th. It's the education. I'm adding here one special session on September 23rd. It's going to be another two hours uh, where we're going to put everything together, and it's going to be, I'm going to show you how I place my orders, you know, the nitty-gritty and all that stuff. Plus, you're going to be spending 30 days with me, trading lab. I'm going to tell you what to trade where your entries are, where your stops are, how to position size, whether the trade is good for the micros or good for the full contract. And I'm going to do this on Thursday as well. So, uh, and then active mentoring. The tuition is 4,995. We have installments available. Okay. And um, yeah, so this is pretty much what we're going to be teaching you. The most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. The six major disciplines of every trade, the entry, the stop, the target, trade management, position sizing and trailing, market tempo, how to maximize your timing using key moving averages and other powerful indicators, how to maximize gains and minimize losses using proper money management techniques. Uh, I'm going to teach you market timing. When is the right time to buy or to sell? The precise location, depending on my favorite times. Remember, there are four, those four price points. Uh, also, advanced technical analysis. You won't need another technical book anymore, another technical analysis book, because I'm going to teach you everything there is to know to be successful at trading, have clean charts, read price action, and be very focused. So we do offer the classes live with me from six o'clock until eight o'clock or eight thirty or nine o'clock it depends on when we're done depending on the volume of questions you also get the on-demand recording you get a 400 page manual you get my platform layout you get the workstation initiation um, um uh, with me live you get the risk charts you get unlimited retakes 
Because guess what, guys? Trading is not something that you learn now in a week and you're going to apply it 100%. You're going to give it your 100% and trade like a Warren Buffett the next day. No. Every single time you're going to come and trade with, and when you're going to come and take the class with me, you're going to learn something and you're going to have those aha moments. Say, oh, okay. So that's why it's working. Okay. So that's why, because it, repetition is key in trading. Okay. Uh, when is the best time to roll into the next contract? You could do it. Uh, well, I typically do it on Thursday, Larry. I typically do it on Thursday. Okay. So a day before I do it a day before. Okay. Um, okay. Can an experienced futures trader join day trading without join day trading without training? Well, you can, but, uh, Shashmir, the, the issue here is that, do you know how to position size? Do you have confidence into the setups? Are you going to do, I mean, this is the biggest thing. I do have traders that, you know, come into my trading room and oftentimes they come uh, and they sit around for a month or two. They don't have any prior trading education and then they leave. And Shamir, you know why? Because traders come into my trading room, I only take one or three trades a day, and some days I don't even take a day trade. And they feel that, oh, I'm not getting my money's worth. I was expecting to execute like five or six trades. And it's not the thing, okay? I'm not going to trade when the markets are not appropriate for trading and for my trading style, okay? So the thing is that if you're not educated into trading, you know, you might learn a thing or two, but the problem is that you're gonna get, you're gonna be there and say, hey, you know what? She didn't call a trade today. I mean, this is not for me. I wanted to trade. I, I wanted to take like five trades and make five thousand dollars today. She didn't deliver. That's not the case because maybe the markets are sideways. Maybe we don't take a trade that day. Maybe we have some news announcements that day, and an untrained trader would not understand that. But anyway, everybody's free to uh, free to join our trading room. Uh, so do make your decision on that. Um, the cost of my trading room is $299 a month. It is live trading and mentoring. We have proven track record. We have a proven track record, uh, on that. Okay. So I don't have my, um, my track record here, but you can go on our website, go on our website is tradeallow.com, uh, forward slash performance i think it's under and it's under the trading room tab just click under the trading room tab and uh you will find my uh you will find my track record right there with all the trades the losers the winners everything all these trades were time stamped in the trading room they are confirmed verified okay they're verified okay uh i did have a question uh hold on uh, when will be the next education week? It's probably going to be two months or uh, two months from from today. Uh, what is calibration? P.S. I'm so sorry. I just got your question right now. What is calibration? Uh, all right. Uh, during what is calibration during the witching and rollover? Okay, so there are different kinds of calibration. Number one, there's a calibration uh, that happens every single time, uh, depending on market volatility. And this is like the short version, okay? Uh, depending on market volatility, it can last anywhere from five minutes or from two minutes to five minutes all the way from, uh, from several hours. And high volatility markets like we had last year in October, November, December, and last February 2018, the market calibration in the morning, that is when 375 hedge funds, guys, closed their doors. Closed their doors. And we thrived. Look at our portfolio. Okay. So uh, these calibrations are, uh, uh, what happens is the price needs to calibrate. So it gyrates from support resistance, support resistance. It forms its, its own range until it finds its balance to take off or to push lower. So it's testing different areas of resistance and support, or it is trying to establish its own support resistance area. Um, into uh, option expiration, every single option expiration, obviously it happens every, uh, uh, it happens every month, but every three months, 
You have a big quadruple witching option expiration where stocks, option futures all expire. And when these expire, you know, you have the prices that are pinned to certain numbers. You know, you have the specialists that are pinning the prices at certain numbers, and you have these huge oscillations and gyrations in the market. This is just the short version of it. Um, uh, Gerald, because why can't you see all the questions? Uh, how are they coming in? Well, I don't know if I can, uh, I, okay, so here's the thing. You see where you're typing in the question, you have a drop down, and then you have all panelists and all panelists and attendees. Okay, some of the traders in the room have uh, selected only all panelists, okay? So I'm the only one that can see your question, okay? And that's there, it's not me, I don't set it. Guys, please, okay? If you have a question or if you have any comments, please make it public. I love to have everything right in the open, okay? So I'm going to be sending you guys the recording from this webinar. Let me know. Did I, uh, did I miss any questions? Uh, explain why I need to roll a contract. That is a very good question. Okay. Uh, you need to roll the contract because the contract expires. Uh, so futures indices expire at the end of each quarter. And because you don't want your contract to expire. The beauty about trading futures is that if you're running into an option expiration, your option may expire worthless. Well, that's not the case. Uh, that's not exactly DDD. Uh, so that's not the case for, uh, that's not the case for uh, futures indices. Futures indices, you could actually roll into the next, uh, into the uh, a future contract. No, it does. Uh, April, that's a great question. Uh, you have to do the role yourself. So you have a role feature on your platform or you just exit your current trade and you re-enter it uh, into the new contract. I'm not familiar Robin Hood at all. Okay, thank you, Lynn. All right, thank you. What happens if you forget to roll? They're going to close the trade for you, but then again, you're not going to have the position open in the forward contract. And don't forget, we have a full session tomorrow, guys. We have a full session, and tomorrow we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of trading. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to, do, to make like an introduction today. Tomorrow we're going to continue just to get you a little bit ready for live trading, get you a little bit prepped for live trading. So I don't want to do an open house and say, hey, just come in. And I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, Sybil, that's a great question. How much experience should one have before attempting to, uh, to try to, uh, to this type of trading? You'll need the class. So you need to know exactly what you're doing. And you can start trading. Uh, so if you decide to take the class, I, I take traders from A to Z. I take traders, so this class is not only for beginner traders, the traders that have never traded a day in their life or have traded for a few months or have traded for a year unsuccessfully or five years unsuccessfully. Uh, this class is for everyone. So we take beginner trader, we learn. Um, and by the way, guys, tomorrow we're gonna do a class intro where I will walk you through what I teach in the class. We go through from candlesticks to strategies, to risk management, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, money management, uh, to psychology. So we do everything. Yes, I, I teach the classes. I am the trader and I teach the classes. And I think that my portfolio by now speaks for itself. We have a proven track record. I mean, for stock trading, we have a proven track record since 2011, since the inception of Trade Out Loud. And for the futures program, since we started teaching the class, I think it was 2016 or 2017. The live day trading will be recorded and sent through the email. Yes, it, there, it, it is, it's going to be super easy to follow, super easy to follow. Uh, I'm typing in the room uh, the trade. So it, let's say if we have a trade in the MNE S&P, I'm typing the symbol, whether long or short. 
um, and uh, be entry. I'm typing in the stop. I'm typing in um, uh, the targets. Uh, but before that, before I type it in, I'm on the mic constantly updating uh, on the market conditions, updating and and kind of walking you through every single tick of the chart. Okay, I don't use any sophisticated uh, sophisticated indicators. You don't need to buy anything. It's just pure price action at its best. And you're gonna benefit from my 20 years of uh, trading experience. I've been trading for a long time. I love what I'm doing. I don't see myself doing anything else. And uh, I hope you guys like lo love it too because you have to love trading. Uh, because if you don't love trading, you're not going to be dedicating time. Uh, in, uh, and, you know, uh, DDD, how much do I rely on fundamentals? Ah, 10%. 10% <laughs> I do pay attention to fundamentals of course I read uh, earnings I look at projections so I do my analysis but I uh, it, uh, trading is 90% 90% uh, for me technical because of algorithmic trading oh Lynn thank you so much I'm telling you like you guys if you you when you guys are going to be in the room those trades are going to be in the portfolio uh pre uh when you're not asking me to marry you you're asking if somebody had earlier a question about that i forget it <laughs> yes it was lynn i believe <laughs> oh thank you lynn thank you i appreciate that I love you for doing that. Okay, uh, so yes, Lynn asked the question if we can set and forget a trade, and yes, we could do that. We could do that. Of course, it is great when the market is not sideways, and typically, uh, it's gonna be a good idea for the set and forget trades once we have a really nice smooth trend going on. Um, and I told you guys that I'm looking at gold. I'm looking at the price action activity in gold because the more it hovers into the 1500 area, to me, it's not committed on either side of the tape. So if it trades over 1510, it could go back to 1520 and 1530. But as long as it's staying into the 1594 where it is trading right now, um, I think that it may wanna pull back to the uh, 1495 zone. Awesome. You know what? I have never used the Tastyworks platform. Can you trade futures on Tastyworks platform? Isn't that only options? Is that, you could trade futures off of that? Really? Wow, okay, I'm gonna look into it. See, I'm learning things from you guys. <laughs> Okay, Romeo launching a brand new, uh, uh, launching a micro contract soon. That's fantastic. I did not do that. I, I knew about the futures option and I know that they're doing options and I knew about the futures options. I didn't know about the futures, uh, the pure futures. A, ninja, a lot of traders, Pablo, a lot of traders in my room are using Ninja. I like the, I like the Ninja platform very, very much. I like the Ninja platform very much. The reason why I trade off of the Thinkorswim platform is because I do a lot of swing trading in stocks. So I need a platform that can accommodate uh, options, stocks, uh, and obviously futures. uh gold 1493 right now yes april if, if, if i think it may want to go to that 84 and i'm not interested in shorting here i would be interested in buying at the 1584.85 exactly gold is at 14 oh i'm sorry 1494 1494 is where gold is. let me share the chart with you guys if you still uh want to hang around here a little bit longer we can talk some trading. 
Okay, so you can see that we uh, we have violated, this is the daily chart, we have violated this, uh, we had a pretty considerable ma uh, support level here into the 1500. Now don't forget 1500 round number, uh, remember that sometimes support is established by the whole number itself. So it likes to stabilize hedge funds, institutional traders, and even algo see uh, these areas as, as being, uh, you know, support resistance. And they often initiate trades off of these levels or they sell uh, off of these levels. So the fact that we broke below a little bit here, I think that we may want to pull back all the way into this 50 SMA. So you could use, I use very simple indicators. The reason why I use these uh, moving averages, and I'm going to explain to you this tomorrow, is because a lot of algos are programmed off of these moving averages. And uh, uh, all right, April, you have an Allura 89? Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. So uh, 14, like I said, I'm looking for this area all the way from 1475 to 1485. Okay, this, this may be the new support zone right here around this area. Uh, Peter, fast as hell. I like fast. I could tell you that. I'm going to try it. So taste, let, let me write it down. Tasty trade. Is it tasty trade or tasty work? Okay. Awesome. Those, thank you guys. All right. So remember, you don't have to register for tomorrow. You're automatically, thank you, April. You can, uh, you could just, uh, uh, you could just, um, um, log in. There's going to be a reminder for tomorrow's session. Okay. Uh, so just uh, log in using, uh, using the same link. And then for the live uh, for the live uh, trading, remember, you have to register. It's a different event, okay? So you have to register for that. Thanks so much, guys. I will talk to you tomorrow, okay? So it was a little bit longer than expected, but I hope it was useful, okay? Answers a lot of questions. Uh, make sure you, if you have any questions for today, make sure that you, um, you, you know, you think about it, think about the webinar, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have any other questions, ask me tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, April. Thank you, Sophie, DDD, SP, Pre, everybody that is in here tonight. Uh, thank you for hanging around with me all, uh, all this time. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. And happy trading tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, giving me your time today. Have a good night.